Hey, what's going on out there, YouTube family? This is Sammy Lego Heroes and Team JVS just got done looking at new Netflix film, Day Shift. Uh, this is directed by J.J. Perry. This is starring Jamie Foxx, Snoop Dogg, Megan Good, and Dave Franco. The baseline premise of this is <laughs> an L.A. vampire hunter, I kid you not, is uh, trying to get paid before Monday to make sure that his daughter gets paid in order gets um, her tuition taken care of as well as making sure she gets some prizes. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, I full context, I never looked at any of the trailers. I just knew I saw Jamie Foxx, I saw Snoop Dogg, I saw Dave Franco, I saw Vampires. I'm a big vampire fan. Um, it doesn't matter what the genre is. I'm very excited to see what Interview of the Vampire is going to be for AMC. Um, even though it's not vampires, I'm curious to see what they're going to do with The Last of Us on HBO. Um, I think the last vampire show that I looked at was, I think, First Kill on Netflix. And then before that, it would probably be the originals of Vampire Diaries. But uh, what did I think about Day Shift? I think I went into it having the expectation that there was going to be shenanigans, that it was going to be cringy at times, it was going to be corny at times, and probably some of the jokes weren't going to land. And that is the truth. But I was very entertained. Like, I think the reality of why I was so entertained, it goes back to the old Buffy the Vampire Slayer movie, okay? Before Buffy the Vampire Slayer was adapted into a TV, a TV show series with Josh Whedon was the original movie, right? If you go back to that original movie, it was so cheesy and weird but it was practical there was no vfx it was just vampires being vampires and how can you kill them by any means necessary and that is this movie in space heck they had freaking um one of my favorite like martial artists in this randomly scott atkins there's a scene i kid you not scott atkins jamie fox dave franco and another person and they are dealing with the hive of vampires and the the choreography and as well as even the way it's even shot is very entertaining like it's all practical there's not any heavy cg and i think the thing about it i just got done looking at another film which is ironic in carter carter came out just recently and i was really excited for carter but they use so much different camera angles that it came off as really CGS. It didn't seem really practical. And I couldn't differentiate between what was the camera angles, real life, or VFX camera angles. And this, when there's like a car sequence or when there's like a battle or when there's like, you know, a gunfight or whatnot, I can tell, you know, they're they're using certain means to make sure it's a practicality about it. Of course, there's some scenes, of course, it's going to be VFX when you got like vampires and vampirism. But even the first moment when Jamie Foxx is going up against a very older vampire in the very first shot, like they use somebody that's a contortionist. They use like different means to make sure the fight seemed engaging and different and also very volatile and very gory and very dangerous. And there's definitely some dangerous scenarios that happen in this one that I thought that they did a really good job with to make sure to keep it entertaining. But they keep it very, this is weird. This is a weird thing to say. This is very rated R. Like the gore in this is, is out there. Like some of the deaths in this, as far as vampires are concerned, are actually really freaking dope. But I think the brutality of vampires is not, it's not um it's not captured in this. I think they try to keep it tonally progressive and just okay because there is like Jamie Foxx's daughter in this. And Dave Fancro, in all intents and purposes, is trying to be the comic relief and like the innocent bystander in this. So it's like you feel like there's not but so much they're gonna go down this dark path. Um and I think that may be the fault of this because I think if they would have took more of a serious approach with this and not tried to make it gimmicky or comedic at times this could have been actually pretty interesting um I think that they could have went with this on like a, a possibly like a trilogy kind of set if this was more of a serious tone uh I think that when the stakes started to be like oh, okay there's real stakes here and it kind of gets like pushed away I'm like like you just lost out on a very good 
you know, route for this and the trajectory of it, it still keeps and maintains being entertaining, even down to the, the third act. But then the third act also becomes uh, very uh, superhero-esque, like very unbelievable, uh, very gunslinger-esque. Um, and even like the final fight, like they, it does not, it doesn't feel that fulfilling. But to be fair, um, I'll give you a good example. Like I really liked Black Panther. I think Black Panther is very essential to uh, not just a, a group of people, but also the superhero fandom. But the last fight was not that good. And it wasn't because it wasn't choreographed well, but it felt all CG and just it, it just ended in flat. But I think the punchline for it at the end with Chitala and Killmonger at the end at the you know, looking upon the ocean. I think that that saved the fight. Whereas with this, like, there's not a whole bunch of CG or anything like that, but it just kind of, like, is cliche and just ends. And I was like, they could have really went for some real serious stakes. No pun intended. Uh, but I do like the entertainment value of this. I like the way that they handled the choreography. I had handled, like, the fight scenes. Um, I think that they use creative ways of being able to handle and utilize vampires. They also change the hierarchy of what certain vampires are and what they, they do by using a lot of exposition, specifically with James Franco's character. Um, the other thing that I thought was interesting is also the song selections. I mean, when you got Snoop Dogg in this, they're going to have a good penny when it comes to like the music. But I think they could have went a little bit even harder with that, but they did, just didn't lean into that. I think they tried to keep it toned down it's so weird like it is rated r in terms of violence but it doesn't feel rated r in terms of stakes or tone or anything like that like i think they just try to make it really a fun time so i think it's good for netflix i think it's a good entertaining ride on a weekend or or a, a late night um they also make homage and some nudges with some other vampire s movies um, I think that for some people, it might come off really cheesy, really corny and forgettable, possibly. Um, I rested at a seven out of 10. Um, I, would I watch it again? I think I would watch it with my wife or other people. I think it'd be fun to watch and just joke around again. But it's not something I would immediately rush back to seeing. But I do love the fact that they used a lot of practical effects. I love that they actually took their time with specifically certain entertaining scenes um, to make them engaging. Um but it's just the tonal cross with it. It's just, I, I don't know. I, I think if you got a rated R rating, I think you should utilize it to the utmost. But I, I don't know. It depends on where they're trying to reach with this. Let me know. What did you think about Day Shift? If you haven't seen Day Shift yet, does this make you intrigued to see it? Or are you on the fence now, even more so? Let me know in the comment section below. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell button. Thank you so much for watching. Peace, guys.